What's up, you guys? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And uh, this week's episode, I'm so excited to have. We've been wanting to get him on for a while. You know him from, I mean, social media, TikTok. He's got an amazing podcast called Breathe If You Agree. I'm very excited to have you. Julian Brzezinski, everyone. Uh, Or Julian Cookies. Yes, whatever you prefer. Yes, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Um, What have you been up to? What is going on? I just see you all over the place oh. um, from your videos. I feel like I've, I I discovered you during COVID, which mm. I feel like is a great time to discover people. And um, you were just on TikTok, just doing all your videos. What is what is it so special about your videos? What made you want to get into these like impressions? And I mean, lip sync assassin. Oh, thank you. Like seriously. So yeah, I started during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I got into the videos, um, I think as Happy Pride Month also. as Thank you. You, <laughs> yeah, know, you as well. <laughs> as being very gay since I was younger, from since birth actually. Yeah. Um, I always was bullied and like went through that and movies and TV were always a an escape for me. Mm-hmm. So I'd come home from school and I have two siblings as well. So I, I didn't want to always tell my parents what was going on at school until, you know, they found out kind of throughout. But I would always go down to the basement and watch movies and TV shows uh-huh. and like get behind on schoolwork. But I was like escaping into these fantasies and these like, I, life is going to be like this one day through these um, actors and actresses and performances that are so iconic in 90s rom-coms and all those kind of movies. And I ended up going to my parents for the beginning of the pandemic because we all thought it was going to be like two weeks or something. So there I come. Oh, yeah. I remember that when it was just like two weeks. We can do this, guys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, of course. And, yeah. and luckily my um, a couple bins from college were there uh, full of costumes. And I had like a ring light and things like that from um, sending in auditions for music theater and Mm self-tapes and things. So when everything shut down and um, I found myself like binging these movies and TV shows and it was almost like a nostalgic place for me because we were all so scared of what was happening and I kind of like was able to escape into these again. Mm -hmm. And I had the costumes and, and everything and I started to put it into my own hands and kind of create these fantasies in like a low budget way mm-hmm. on on TikTok and hopefully and this still is my goal um as a performer in general or anything is to like create an escape for others um in this dark time I was lucky enough to spend it with my parents and I know a lot of people were like alone or just um everyone is going through a hard time <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was um that was a goal just to even in one minute or less just a little escape from the world and that's when I started doing them, and I I love doing them. It's brought so much opportunity and also a path of life I never expected and mm-hmm. brought me here to this podcast and also in L.A. So yeah. it's been really special, and I, I really um, hold it dear to my heart. Are you going to cry? No. Okay. <laughs> it's okay if you do. It's totally fine. No, because I will say, like, honestly, like, I feel like I met you— in person at the telethon last year, the Dragons and Dangerous telethon. Uh-huh. And you're just such a nice guy. And it's so refreshing. And honestly, I will say, there's so much content on TikTok and Instagram. And you're just kind of like, okay, okay. But like, honestly, yours is just so effervescent and fun. And again, nostalgic. Like I was going through, I think you're... Um, the monster-in-law one popped up with your mom. You yeah. actually, like, you use your parents in the videos. And they're just so, like, just edited well and crafted well and the lighting. And it is, like, low budget. I'm assuming you have, like, a wig room because yeah. you just have all the wigs. <laughs> and it's just, like, you do Chicago and you do, like, you know, all these all these amazing films and you just clip them and make them your own. And they're so funny. Thank you. And um, it's just nice to see that. And, I, and I'm noticing now that there's, like, uh, what are they called? Like uh, 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 imitations. There's, there's n- now. There's other people who are like, well, I'm gonna slap on a wig and do it, and I'm gonna slap on a wig and do it. And I'm like, mm, no, you're the OG. So, well, 
I appreciate that. I don't know if I, I originally started it, but I will say, and, and love to everybody who does it. I yes, love, of course, of course. Like, amazing. But I will say, nobody does do it like me. That's, I, will say I mean, that. hands and down. I, and I hold that to it. But I, I love what I do, and I, I do put a lot of time and effort, so that means a lot. How long does it take you to, like, make? I mean, literally, these are, what, like, 90-second clips, if that? Yeah, they can they can range. So, like, I just did a few, or I've had a few where I've done, like, the whole scene and song, so oh. it could be up to, I think the longest one I've ever done of a lip sync was probably, like, eight to nine minutes, but oh. that was, like, I think Cell Block Tango is, like, eight minutes. Yeah. Like, a full production kind of takes maybe a few days, but, like, depending on the character and how much movement there is in the scene. If it's mm -hmm. just like a tight like shoulder up or just standing kind of argument or like love scene, it doesn't take, uh, you know, a few hours. I can do that in a day. And Ooh. so it, it 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 ranges, especially though, um, if I don't feel like I'm in it, I like stop doing it because I know it won't be good and I'll get frustrated of the editing and everything because I do really do it all by myself anyway. So it does get, I have to like allow myself that grace to stop when I am not feeling like every it. artist. <laughs> yeah, like, stop. Exactly. I, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> it's not ready. Now, when did you know this was kind of like a viral sensation? Like, what was the first? Do you remember the first clip that was like, "Oh shit, this is like we're onto something here." Yeah, I the first one that ever like got a lot of traction was Jersey Shore um, mm -hmm. in season two when they're in the car to the club and Angelina comes back and Sammy's like, I don't know. And she's like, are you talking about guys? Because y'all hated me because I left because it was about guys, whatever. And they're like, shut up. Like, we're not talking about you. That one first went off. And then I started doing Jersey Shore um, pretty much exclusively. And then in my mind, I was like, I need to start like branching out because it can't be just Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started doing like really everything. I mean, I started off doing movies and different things. But then once one thing hit, I was like, oh, keep it going. Why well, fix it when it's not broke kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then just continue to do it. And then it just kept growing. And thankfully, like, I don't know, I... Do people like DM you and they're like, you're on to something, kid. Like, what are <laughs> they, like, what is that process? Or like sponsors and all that kind of stuff just mm -hmm. come in being like, okay, we're seeing your numbers and you're clearly going viral and like, mm -hmm. help us. Yeah, it definitely... It has led to, I never imagined it being able to be like my job or mm -hmm. like my income. And I never thought that I would be a content creator just like fully online because I went to school for music theater and always yeah. have been on stage and and doing that. And once it all started taking off and um, I got a social media manager and helping me do that and help like do deals and things like that. So it's was definitely a journey, mm -hmm. like getting to that point and continuing to make content like daily and trying to keep up with it. And still today, it's like I, I try and do it as as much as possible to keep on it and to like stay off your phone. <laughs> yeah. You're just like I'm always on it. Yeah. Literally, it's so hard. Like it's funny because I have kind of gotten horrible at texting because like I'm on my phone all day, uh -huh. shooting or editing or anything like that. So like once. I finish a video or a ticket, it's like my phone's to the side. I'm like, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to like deal with it. But um, yeah, they've, they've, I, I've kind of created my own space mm -hmm. where I was feeling a little trapped in musical theater before the pandemic. Like I was like, I look like I could be a leading man, but I'm not necessarily in, in musical theater terms. I still believe there is no. Hell, we could all be leading men exactly. in musical theater. <laughs> exactly. But I felt like it was being, like, put on a more masculine, like, cover to uh -huh. go into these auditions, then put on a role. And it was getting to... I was losing myself in that and losing the love of performing in that, too, because I felt like I was just trying to be somebody who I wasn't. When everybody around me was like, just be yourself. That's what they want. And then it's like, well, not really. Yeah. Um, so like creating that space where I could, you know, lip sync and also create like original content as well, where I am, you know, the leading male character, the leading female character, or just like the fluidity in between them and creating that own space to do that. Mm -hmm. So even today, I, I still, um, am figuring that out, but yeah, DMs are always so, 
everyone's so nice and like suggestions and it's brought a lot of movies and TV shows I haven't seen that I got to learn, which has oh, people been People are like amazing. recommending like, like, do this video, do this movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah which great. Is, which is really nice and has been a great um, communication between mm-hmm. people who enjoy the videos as well. So That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I will say... Uh, Congrats on all of that. That's fantastic. Um, it is the first week of summer this mm-hmm. week. We are getting a, uh, s- a summer equinox. Yes. I'm very excited. Summer is great. A lot of movies um, are coming out. And I going off of what you said about the recommendations, the girls are girling. Like, the summer bops are happening. Oh, honey. Uh, Charlie XCX, Sabrina, Chapel Road, all these. I'm like, I'm so excited. Yeah. But then I was thinking about Charlie XCX with her new album, Bratz. Uh, Brat? Brat. Brat, plur- uh, singular. Um, and then I was watching over the weekend this uh, documentary called Bratz, mm. which is about the Brat Pack. Are you familiar with the Brat Pack? I, it's on Hulu. Yes. I, I'm, yes. Yes. The movie. Is. Says, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. You're not familiar with the Rat Pack. No. I know it is kind of like oh, mm. it's interesting because mm. it was Demi Moore, Ali Sheedy, Judd Nelson, Andrew McCarthy, Molly Ringwald. Yeah, here they all are, and Emilio Estevez. Oh, I. So it. Andrew McCarthy, who is the one on the far right, uh-huh. he gets them all together, and it's pretty much this like, um era during, like, 1985, um, where Hollywood was just, like, all young kids. Uh Like, there was, like, teenager movies, uh, St. Almost Fire, Breakfast Club, All the Right Moves, like, uh, something kind of wonderful, like, Back to the Future, all these movies with, like, young kids in it. And so Andrew McCarthy on the far right is like, I know what everyone needs right now. I'm going to, like, get us all together and talk about how being called the Brad Pack, like, changed our lives. And uh-huh. so he's, like, interviewing everybody. And, you know, obviously Demi Moore and Rob Lowe and even Emilio Estevez. I mean, they're doing well, right? Uh-huh. They've had, like, the careers. So Andrew McCarthy is just, like, it's, like, actually kind of sad. Because, like, Andrew McCarthy's, like, going up to these people and being, like, wasn't it just awful when they called us the Brat Pack? Because they were they were just, like, you know, these Hollywood kids and... He interviewed the guy who called him the Brat Pack in The New Yorker, and he was like, I didn't mean it like anything bad. It's just like you guys were like young kids, and it just rhymed with Rat Pack, like Sinatra's, you know, group. Yeah. And he was like, well, I was really offended by it, and it like it like ruined our reputations, and pretty much just like Demi Moore was just like, you need to get over this. Mm. Like, <laughs> you need to grow up. So it was just kind of like, ooh, but... If you if you do do those movies, that's so really like The Breakfast Club. You've have you seen The Breakfast? I Club? I love The Breakfast yeah. Club. Yeah. So they're just talking about like, oh my god, that movie like changed my life, um, and it made me think of like, I feel like we're kind of in like a Renaissance brat packish era. Mm. I mean, just look at you know you have Zendaya, um, Tom Holland, uh, uh, what's his name uh, from Saltburn. Uh, Jacob Elordi. Jacob Elordi and the other one, uh, uh, Barry Keegan. Ba- is it Keegan? Kyogen, maybe? Kyogi, it's, yeah. Something. Peroni. It's, yeah. Starts yeah, with the game. But like all, like Sydney Sweeney. Yes. We're getting all these like young kids. Um, uh, what's her name? Ethan Hawke's daughter. Uh, Maya Hawke. Maya Hawke, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, sorry, I'm still on like Austin time. Cause, totally. Yeah, shout out Austin. Y'all were great. Thank you for coming and all the Just Sayers who came. It was really, really fun. But yeah, so it was, that's an interesting documentary but I was kind of like, ooh. But it was fascinating to see like that we're kind of, I think, in like this, young performer era. Like, all these young kids are coming in and, like... Totally. Not kids, but, like, young adults stepping in and doing their thing. For sure. What wow, What is your um, summer bop right now? Do you have one? My summer bop right now... Well, loving Brat, loving Chaperone, always love me some Ariana Grande. So, yeah. The Boy Is Mine is on repeat always. Really? And, yeah, I love Eternal Sunshine. Mm-hmm. She's my... Queen. And then, but Brat365, I was walking the other day. I was like, I had to go somewhere fast. I put it on. Baby, I was five minutes early. I thought it was late. (laughs) Yeah. When it's like 365, I was walking at like double speed than I was. So Brat365 and then loving um, Red Wine Supernova. Please, please, please. Sabrina Carpenter. Everybody you said really, and I'm so excited I I saw on the screen. I don't know if we're talking about Katy Perry. I'm a a Katy cat. Yes. Oh, are you? I am. Good. I'm excited. We will be getting into that because yes, Katy Perry is like, oh, I have something to say as well. And I'm like, Oh, God. <laughs> We're not ready. 
She looks amazing in the cover art today. Can yeah, you know? she's got like her weird like centaur legs. Yeah, I didn't know if they were centaur or robotic or a mixture of both. It could be like horse robot legs. I mean, just what we need. You I'm, know, why not? Yeah, throw just it in there. Go throw it in the mix. weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let it happen. But um, let's definitely get into some stories for this week. Um, this one is kind of like, this one popped up overnight. Army Hammer, finally, <laughs> breaks, his, <laughs> breaks his silence on cannibalism accusations. Mm. Did someone say Pride Month? Um, which, I don't know. Th when, did he, when did this come out that he was, like, eating people? Because I'm just going to, I want to call him, like, Arm E. Ham Ear. <laughs> because uh, he, wa he wants to set the record straight about those cannibalism accusations. So, yes, mm. three years later, he is ready to break his silence. Um, he made these, ac or these accusations came out in 2021, of, uh, January, so... Several anonymous users shared alleged graphic DMs from the Call Me By Your Name actor that referenced uh, acts and other fantasies, including two that allegedly read, I need to drink your blood, and I am 100% cannibal. I mean, at least let them know. Give them a percentage. Mm. Uh, the message... <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm not 62% cannibal. Yeah. I'm 100%. <laughs> um which I would have thought this text would have come from Kesha, because that would have been kind of iconic if she was like, cannibal, cannibal, I'll drink your blood. Um, the messages whose authenticity has not been verified helped derail Hammer's acting career and preceded a two-year uh, essay investigation, which ended up with no charges filed. So he's now saying there were things that people were saying about me that just felt so outlandish. Really, army, hmm. outlandish. He says, oh, they were saying I was a cannibal. So he said, now I'm able to sort of look at it with a sense of distance and perspective and be like, that's hilarious. People called me a cannibal and everyone believed them. They're like, yep, that guy ate people. You're just like, what? What are you talking about? Do you even know uh, what you have to do to be a cannibal? You have to eat people. How am I going to be a cannibal? It was bizarre. Hmm. What is happening? <laughs> Uh, is he derailing in the interview? <laughs> I get like taking some time to process something, but maybe three years to be like, yeah, it didn't happen. You can't like, say what are you you're ready about? to talk about it and then make no sense. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and then still spiral. Yeah. 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 <laughs> God, drink some more blood. Like, relax. <laughs> Um, so now he's looking back at the turmoil with a feeling of gratitude, of course. He's like, whatever it was that happened, I'm now at a place in my life where I'm grateful for every single bit of it. <gasps> Today's word is bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he says, I'm actually now at a place where I'm really grateful for it because where I was in my life before all of that stuff happened to me, I didn't feel good. I never felt satisfied. I never had enough. I never was in a place where I was happy with myself, where I had self-esteem. I never knew... How to give myself love. This is trash. Um, so he's now saying that uh, he's, he's, he's better than ever. Mm. His career is over. <laughs> he's just where he needs to be. Yeah, well, if he's at peace, even if that is a lie, which yeah. not saying it is, but, you know, came a little late, but, you know, all is well, and I hope he's not eating people. Did it come out that he actually ate people? It was just uh, pretty graphic messages. Um, I think they were on Facebook or something. They were pretty detailed of what he wanted to partake in. But he never was like, let's, you know, let's get the air fryer going. You know, let's, I got some <laughs> rosemary olive oil in a pan. Totally. Nothing like that, he's right? He's like, uh, yeah, the the water's boiling. You can head over. <laughs> no, yeah. I think it was it was more... In a sexual fantasy in kind, kind of, of dark web. In a dark, yeah, in a dark, darker language in into that. But I don't think there was any like preparation or cooking instructions that were also included. <laughs> yeah. I I'm I'm glad because I hope he never did actually hit anybody, but I hope he does find peace now and maybe so I'm, I feel like that's, I mean, are we, is he just ruined forever, scorned forever? I mean, do we see Army Hammer, like, getting on Dancing with the Stars? I mean, do we see Army Hammer, uh, like, cooking with Gordon Ramsay? Mm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, for maybe a while. I yeah. thought he was doing, I thought I had heard he was doing real estate somewhere. Like, Oh, yeah, that was like, yeah, I think that was maybe like last year he was like looking into that. Yeah, 
So, mm. you know. Or maybe we could give him a, a new uh, reality show called Smelling Sunset, where he's in the real estate business on Sunset and at the same time aggressively smelling the aroma of something cooking. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. He or loved, of just Hollywood himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smelling <laughs> Sunset, starring Army Hammer. Um, now, let's get into Katy Perry. Uh Katy Perry, she has officially announced that she is releasing Woman's World, her new song, on July the 11th, the video July the 12th. Pre-save and pre-order and get ready to pop off mama with katyperry.com. Yeah. Um, she looks great. I'll give her that. She looks amazing. She looks great. And here's the thing. I'm going to be very honest. Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. is having a hard time with this because woman's world belongs to Cher. This is a woman's world. Where she had that like like hamster window hair. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about? Where like you walk by a pet store in the window and there's like cats and she had that like newspaper hair. That's a video you should do. Oh, fair. This is a woman's world. Yeah. She had that, all that newspaper clipping hair. Um, I saw that tour. That was one of the farewell tours, but I yes. did see that one. Yeah, that was uh, one of the many farewell yeah, tours. Yeah, yeah. I'm never asking for... Keep doing them, sure. Keep doing the farewell tours. <laughs> keep we'll keep them going. Up. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that one. But uh, she is now... You know, people are like, Woman's World is share song. And I don't know. I feel like she did do I Kissed a Girl back in the day, which was like the summer jam. Yes. Um, which was also kind of a, a takeoff of Jill Sobule's, uh I Kissed a Girl mm. back in the 90s. So I, I'm i excited. I don't know. She kind of lost me at Swish, Swish, Bish. Oh, really? I, yeah. I love Swish, Swish. It was just, I don't know. It was something there. It was the pixie cut, the backpack kid. It was oh. too much. I, f I feel, I, I love her. Yeah. And I do see the title being similar to Cher's. But I do think maybe today a lot of people take inspiration from mm -hmm. others. Um, I don't know if, you know, people love a sample. I don't think she would release her first, like, comeback as a sample of Cher's Woman's World. Maybe. If, I, it, if it's done well, it could be cool. Yeah, I'd love. Maybe Katy Perry is the, the reduce, reuse, recycle queen we need. She's like, we're going to take this old bop, we're going to fuse it together. We're going to, you know, maybe she spells roar with three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle, Sick you know? Thing. Well, we need that. This The world needs reduce, reuse, recycle. I feel like everything's being sampled now. Yeah, it it, it feels like that in the music industry. Yeah. Definitely we see a lot of samples, but... Like even Robin if, S is just collecting checks. Like, show me love. Boom, ba -da -ba -doom, boom, boom. I'm like, she's like, thank you. We Every love. time I hear it, boom. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh. Another one. <laughs> exactly. But I'm excited. Anything, this is a woman's world. Anything empowering and uplifting women, I'm there for. So if it's Katie, this is Katie's version, I'm, I'm down for it. And I will say this. I'm glad she's off American Idol mm. so she can focus on her music. I, I'm so excited for Katie She did the six. judge. She did the judge. Yeah. She did fine. And now she's like, I got to get back in the studio. And I really hope it's good because, I mean, I... I like Katy Perry. Uh, her first album, uh, Waking Up in Vegas, mm. Firework. I mean, she's got some hits. Yeah. But Teenage felt, Dream is like such Teenage amazing Dream, amazing for, of album. course. Yeah. Um, last Friday Night. Um, I just want her to, to do well. Because mm. um, I felt like her last album, I couldn't even tell you. Daisy. Was it Daisy? What? Mm. It was called Daisy? I believe that's her daughter's name. Too. She has a daughter? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Oh, she has, so she, but I don't remember like one song from that album. I, I don't think I heard one song. There was that song called Daisy. Daisy! <laughs> Oh, I don't know no. that one. It's a good listen. Yeah, there, there, are some, there are some bops on that. But I definitely, I feel you, the beginning um, Teenage Dream album and um, One of the Boys, I believe, sure. is the first album. But all those beginning ones I loved. And then I think sometimes um, shifts in the music come, but hopefully she's taken that time and found her her sound again. I hope so. Yeah. I hope she's just kind of, I mean, I don't know what the hell this look is, but it's kind of spectacular. It's, it, it looks like, I don't know, like Khloe Kardashian going to medieval times. I don't know what Dude. it is. It's literally. <laughs> it's, it's like this bottom, like Terminator, 
Meet the Kardashians. <laughs> like, is it a Skims collab? Is it an exterior Skims collab? I don't know what it is, but it looks, it's it's pretty sick. What's at the bottom of her feet? Is it just like rockets? They're almost rounded. They look, yeah, like a robotic boot almost. Tron Legacy. <laughs> Very that. Is it, it going to be like a club? Is it, I, what What do you, I, it looks like. I don't think it's going to be a ballad. I'd say from that picture. I'd be surprised. I think it's going to be like dancing upbeat, like. Yeah. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. I hope so because I really feel like horse legs are having such a moment right now. Look at that horse. Look at that Renaissance, horse. Renaissance, Beyonce horse. on the horse. Yeah, Like love. everyone's, like horse legs are just it. If you want a <laughs> number one album in the country right now, horse legs, shoot it you straight to it. number one. <laughs> horse legs are everything. Um, well, we're excited for Katy Perry. Uh, KP9. We also got a a teaser that Lady Gaga is coming out with LG7. Is this what they're? Is this just names of albums now, or is this like the, the announcement of their era? Yeah, I think it's like the birthing of the new. Because I know like KP is it KP KP9. Nine. Oh, I thought it was KP6. And then LG7 and LG7. I think then they released the titles after because I remember it like. Yeah, Ariana Grande was AG6. It was like, ooh, yeah. it's it's coming. And I'm ready for SB3, Susan Boyle 3. Like, no one's... <laughs> <laughs> Where did she go? And like, when Celine Dion's back, give me CD52. Yeah. That's what I want. Neat, oh my gosh. Uh, but it is good. I'm glad, I'm glad to see like some of the... the the aughts girls coming back and teaching these young girls a thing yeah. or two. It's kind of fun. Um, all right. Speaking of teaching us a thing or two, we have Reese Witherspoon, and she is doing this impression of Nicole Kidman at the AFI Lifetime Achievement Award that was presented to Nicole Kidman. And she just knocks it out of the park with mm. this impression. And everyone's like, wow, who knew? Reese. It's a good impression. Um, we can hear a little bit of it real quick. She'll often say to me, a, a foreign film I've absolutely never heard of. <laughs> like, y'all, I mean, it's out there. And she's like, but do you see that director? I mean, it's incredible. Reese, we must get her. We must. <laughs> well, I thought it was really good. Um... It made Nicole Kidman sound like an Australian witch, mm. which I was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> we must get her. <laughs> we must. Um, but uh, I I thought it was a good impression. Yeah, I think th I'm so excited for them to be back for Big Little Lies again, uh, if they're really doing that. and They are getting to do... They're doing Big Little Lies again. And yeah. we're also getting Practical Magic 2. Well, so excited. Which they're like, oh, they're still in talks. I'm like... Okay. But Nicole did um, confirm it in an interview. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're so, absolutely doing it. They're just like, oh, they're in talks to do it. They want everyone to be like, ah, give it to us. Totally. They're totally doing it. And it's going to be like their kids. Yeah. I'm hoping Diane Weiss and Stalker Channing come back. Yes. Um, You know, but these kids are probably going to be grown now and be like, oh, I heard the sound of a beetle. You know, same old, same old. But totally. it's going to be great. Yeah. And hopefully the kids are old enough to drink midnight margaritas. Yes. Because let me tell you who's not. Uh, Noah Schnapp. Uh. Um, <laughs> Noah Schnapp over the weekend was kicked out of a New York City club after getting aggressively wasted. Um, Noah is underage. He's 19. Um, but we've seen stranger things in the headlines <laughs> than this story. Um, he was booted from a New York nightclub after getting so out of hand. According to the eyewitness, the Stranger Things star was living it up at the hot spot, The Palace, and allegedly bugging patrons who paid for bottle service to take tequila shots with him and his entourage. However, Noah allegedly came angry after his fellow club goers refused to participate with him. Because why? He's under age, 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 mm. age. So we're told he became aggressively wasted that security escorted him out at around 1.30 a.m. You know what? I'm going to say we've all been there before. I have not. <laughs> you never went out underage? No. Oh. I mean... Me neither. <laughs> I think I never had like a fake ID. Yeah, no. I I never... I mean, I went to like 18 and up clubs. Mm. But like I never... I was so afraid. I was mm. so afraid I was going to be that one kid who they're like, this is fake. Come with us. We're going to call your parents. And you're like, no. Yeah. So I never, I never did. I mean, we did like the pregame before we went to 
the 18 and up clubs, but like, I'm not going to go to a New York City bar at 19 mm. and bug people to do shots with me. Yeah. I don't know, though. I, I wonder if he was like, let's take a shot. I don't, I, I don't know that, but I, I do. I wish I had the balls to like, if I feel like, though, if he got in the club, it's no schnapp. Like, why wouldn't he just, he could buy his own bottle. That's what I'm saying. Why yeah. are you bugging these people who are spending $800 on an overpriced bottle of Tito's? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, guys, <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, yes, it's me from Stranger Things. Come on, you want to go do a shot? They're like, we're fine. This is ours. Come on, do a shot with me. It's me. No schnapp. He's young. It's pride. I okay, say. so now he's entitled. He gets free shots because he's it's Pride Month. Well, this is also page six. Fair. So how do we know if it's true? Because it's page six. They right. would never lie to us. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> it is It is funny. He did come out, I think, like last year. Um, so I don't know. Is this like gay clickbait? They're like, look at the gay guy wanting free shots during Pride Month. <laughs> Yeah, I mean... So, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> getting aggressively wasted, just wanting to take shots. You know what? Let it go off. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't do that. But if it was one of those nights, I, I feel like I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I did have... I've had one of those nights. Have you had one of those nights? What kind of nights? Because, like, yeah. Have you ever been thrown out of a bar for being too drunk? No, but I have Me been either. with people who... <laughs> I have been with people who have. Oh, really? Yeah. It happens to people, though. I... I I feel for those nights, but they just come upon you. In Austin this weekend, I had, um, we were walking down 6th Street, and 6th Street's like the big, like, bourbon street yeah. club kind of street. And there was a guy, I was going back to my hotel room, and there was a guy laying on the ground. Um, but luckily, he was just, like, scrolling through his phone. But just so messed up that he's just drunk on the ground, on the sidewalk, and he's like, just scrolling through his phone. I was he like, was I wanna... in a doom scroll. <laughs> it was, I was like, are, are you okay? Like, do you have people to go home? Like, I asked him, I'm like, are you good? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, at least I tried. I walked home last month to, um, there was a, a female crying. And I was like, are you okay? I was like alone. And I was like, hi. I was like, I, I hope you're okay. Like, do you need anything? And she looks up. I was, like, she was pretty drunk. And she looked up and she goes, Shut the fuck <gasps> up. Rude. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I was like, I was just checking on you. She's like, get away from me. And I was like, <gasps> awesome. I was all, I was like, okay. I, I walked back and I had like a moment of like, fuck you, bitch. But then I was like, no. I, I like resignated. I was like, you know, if I had a hard time, somebody was. I don't know her story, but I hope you're okay as well. But it was so funny. I, I was don't. Like, Are you I good? she's still sitting there. Like, what a bitch. <laughs> Shut the fuck God, up. I I'm sorry like, if I'm trying to make make sure you're okay. She stopped crying though when she got angry. So I did help in a way, I believe. You yeah. know, from sadness to anger. Sadness to anger. Yeah. yeah. The and new inside out too we need. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Those two emotions just working in full force over time. <laughs> exactly. That's insane. I I've I've definitely had that where um I you know, I feel like I'm a very chivalrous person. It's mm. not dead. Like, if I see a woman coming to a, to a door, you know, I'll open it for you, you know, whatever. And I remember opening a door for this woman, and she just looked at me, and she's like, what are you doing? Mm. And I was like, opening the door for you? And she goes, why? She's I, like, I'm trying to be nice. And yeah. she goes, don't. Oh. And I just shut the door in her face. Yeah, but I was okay. like, all right, bye. And just, like, let her, like, and then she was right behind me, and I was like, this is so weird. It, that's so annoying, because it's just, like, kind of what you do now. It's, like, ingrained, I yeah. guess, in us as well. But, like, for anybody who doesn't say thank you to holding the door, I always am, like, so petty. I'm like, you're welcome. There was a guy over the weekend, because um, Texas boys are, like, massive. Mm. Like, there are some guys that I'm like, oh, like, yeah. Oh. Like six, whoa, six, six, like Game of Thrones, the mountain, just like hot and big and yeah. tatted sleeves and like, you know, danger. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, right. And so I'm standing at the bar um, and this big guy in front of me is sitting down. I mean, he had to have been, I'm six, four. He was probably like six, 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 seven, like taller than me. Mm. And he gets up out of the chair and I'm like, oh. <gasps> And he just looks at me and he goes, watch my seat. Mark. And I'm like, what? And he goes, watch my seat. And I go, 
I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. And then he just gets into my eyes and he's like, watch my seat. And I immediately became a 14th century fop. I was like, yes. Yes, darling, yes. 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 <laughs> the seat will be watched, my lord. I, yes, this, it will ever, ever be watched. Yes. This, I, it's all I can do, your grace. I will watch the seat. It was so, like, I immediately became this man's, like, servant. I was like, yes. Yes, of course. All eyes on the seat. <laughs> it was so bizarre. <laughs> but I was like, I don't want to say no. Yeah. Because God knows what would have happened. Of course. During Pride Month? <laughs> <laughs> Page six would take that. Yeah. Justin Martindale aggressively hate crime in Austin Bar. Aggressively. For not watching a seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. <laughs> uh, well, if you're going to get aggressively thrown out of a bar, instead of asking for people's tequila, yeah. may I make a suggestion? Crack open a can of Welch's new canned cocktail wine. <laughs> Just in time for summer, Welch's grapefruit juice is now jumping on the booze in a can trend. Um, and I'm kind of not mad at it. So the company shared with Food & Wine that it's dropping a brand new craft cocktail line of fruit-based beverages. The cocktails, Walsh has explained, are produced by Coop Beverage Works, a subsidiary of Oklahoma City-based craft brewery, Coop Ale Works, which also makes the Sonic Hard Beverages and Tampico Hard Punch. So they're very excited to partner with Welch's to create the lineup of craft cocktails that will bring classic cocktail recipes to the market with the fruit juice flavors that Welch's is known for. Um... I only know like grape. <laughs> totally. <laughs> or like cran apple. So here's the, these are the lines. You got four flavors to choose from vodka transfusion. <sighs> Don't What's tell that? Army Hammer that. <laughs> yeah. he, he loves a <laughs> this good is <laughs> transfusion. Um, vodka cranberry, watermelon mule, and passion fruit mojito. I wish they would stop trying to make passion fruit happen. Do you know what it tastes like? I don't, but. Yeah. I appreciate another, like, not a flavor of what do we usually get in, like, seltzers or new flavors. Like, I guess that's a, a newer one that we haven't gotten. Which in, one? In the passion fruit mojito? Yeah, passion fruit mojito sounds different than, like, are they doing lime? Not really, like, lime know. or peach or the ones that we always get. I think it's a nice change. Yeah, I do love a watermelon. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really drink, like, White Claws and... Mm. There's so many now. Totally. There's so many. I do like the Topo Chico ones. I haven't tried. Oh, so good. I l prefer taking shots. Oh, so you're no like, snap. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. why I feel for him. Yes. I love how you're like, that's why you're like all sentimental. You're like, he's so, so brave. He's so, we've all been there. I'm like, okay, now it all makes sense. Yeah, no, I I'm. I feel like if I do want to have like a, a drink or something and, and, Here's the thing with me. It needs to be real fruit juice. Mm. And if I find out that Welch's, who makes fruit juice my whole childhood, is not putting real juice in there, I'm out. Yeah. I bet and it's going to be really sugary, though, too. So. I hope not. But you know what I want? To see the little girl from the commercials, mm. like, being the spokesperson for the hard seltzers. Ooh, that would be so fun. You're welcome. Yeah. If that's not the, the like, pitch for the marketing... I'm out. It's amazing. I want to see that little girl just shit face now, <laughs> grown up, and be like, and what's this grape juice? Like full Moira Rose, yeah. like for the for the fruit wine. Just, yeah. We threw fruit juice. <laughs> It's empty. <laughs> you know, like I want, I want that. She needs to be blackout drunk, being like, you guys want all this good news? Let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> Oh, is Brian filming this one? Remember when I was eight? <laughs> like, that's, yes. Yeah, that's what I want. I love that direction. I want her selling the Welch's grape juice hard seltzers on 6th Street in Austin, Texas. That's it. <laughs> it's a dream. It all comes, it all comes together. Yeah. It comes to Welch's fruition. <laughs> um, are you having a hot rodent summer? Hot rodent men are having the moment of the summer. We had um, hot girl summer. I felt like, what, a year or two ago? Mm. I don't remember what last year was. Just in general. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the what the term was for last year. Maybe it was like Barbie core because mm. of like Oppen Oppenheimer and all that. But yeah. now, have you heard of the rap men? I have heard of this. 
Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, it's been brought up. It's been suggested Mm. in the past weeks. I wanted to talk about this because I didn't want to jump to conclusions. A lot of people have been talking about it already, but I needed like actual proof. Mm. And as of this weekend, it is official. It is now the summer that belongs to hot rodent men. Mm. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> hot rodent men. <laughs> Which I give, I guess, is we we could call them the rat pack, honestly. <laughs> because these are all, you know, if you don't know what a rat a rat man is, it's an unconventional mousy man with a toothy smile. And instead of a chiseled face like a Brad Pitt or Chris Hemsworth, it's more pointy. It's important for their faces to be angular. That's the dead giveaway. That and big ears. They come off as edgy and elusive. So some of the rat men include, let's see if I know any of these guys. Well, the first one, it's the guy from Challengers. And he also played King Charles. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. We have the actor from The Bear. Um, And who are these other two? The other one on the top is Mike Fass, I believe, who is also in Challengers. Is the other... That's the other one. He had blonde hair in the movie. Yes. It's always a throw-off. Yeah. So, I get it. Like, these these big-eared... I would say, like... Is Jacob Elordi a rat boy? I don't know. Barry Kigo is a a rat boy. He's in the same list. Whatever they are, everybody in this list, I do find very attractive. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, I think everybody here is beautiful. It makes me think, like, what what we would be considered. Like, what animal... Like, where's our summer? And, like, what would I be? (gasps) What would you be? I don't think you would be, like, a rat boy. I, I... I don't know rat, but I, I'm I'm curious to know what I would classify as like a lookalike. But I I, I mean, I hope they don't take it in a bad way because they're all hot. So, what would we be? I would say like, I would say like if you and I feel like rat is like. I I think rat. I, I think, would say like fox or like ferret. Oh, okay, love. You're giving like like. A woodland creature. I'll take that. Okay. I'll take woodland creature summer. I feel, one day. yeah, woodland creature summer. <laughs> it's coming up. You know what? I think last year was Coastal Grandmother. Mm. Or uh, or maybe that was the year before that, but then it was like Coastal Grandmother, and then there was like Wild West Girl. Feral okay. Girl summer was what was it? Feral Girl. Feral Girl. Mm. Feral Girl Summer. I would take, you know what? I'm calling it now. Woodland creature summer. That's what I'm getting on board with. That's what Katie Paris wants us to believe. Yeah. With her centaur legs, you and I are going to be goat men, like, in the woods with flute, horns, and, like, like uh, little clobs. What are they called? Yeah, hooves. Like, yeah, the hooves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like rats are in the forest, so let's just make this summer. Uh, just the forest summer. Yeah, for- it's going to be forest summer. Woodland it's going to be, like, Tiana's Bayou adventure. Love, newly <laughs> Renovated. Fire, fireflies, <laughs> woodland creatures. I'm in. Love. Yeah, these guys can play in the sewer with their rat friends. We're going to be in the woods, like, uh, getting thrown out of uh, satyr bars. Yeah, <laughs> trunks. <laughs> Tree trunks, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tree trunks. Um, well, since we were talking about hot rodent men, mm. I had to bring up some of my personal favorite hot rodent men. Okay. Um, and I want to get your take on these hot rodent men. So first up, we have Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh I feel like he is the daddy of all hot rodent men. Totally. He is a good father. Mm. He took in four turtles from a can of ooze that fell down the sewer in New York. They weren't his children, but he took them in, trained them the art of, you know, Martial arts. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Karate. Taekwondo. And a love Named for pizza. them all after Renaissance painters. Lo- he's an artistic brat. Yeah. Love and it. And he's, he's just a good father figure. So I'm going to give Master Splinter 10 out of 10. Yeah, or- he definitely gives wise. Yeah. He's seen sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um Definitely a hard worker, it seems, and a good father. And that's hot. And you know what? That is. Being present and being a good father and 
Yeah, staying true, a hard worker. That's hot. I'd yeah. say hot. And he's just his kids come first. Yeah. Um He, I, I've never seen him. I've, I've never seen a Mrs. Splinter. Mm. So you know, <laughs> I think it's time that he put himself out there. Put himself out there. Yeah. It's your summer, babes. Get going, girl. Yeah. Like seriously. Uh, next up, we have Ratatouille mm. from Disney Pixar. Now, Ratatouille, I would say, you know, knows he's a rat boy. Mm. Um, but also very talented. Ha- knows recipes, loves to cook. Yeah. Um, avoids death every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, for, for breaking a protocol of cleanliness in the kitchen. Well, he washes his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Does. But does anybody else? Because I feel like everybody else is trying to chop his tail off with a knife. And yeah. I, I don't like that. Well, love a man who cooks. Yeah. And an ambitious man as well. And mm-hmm. he was like, I'm going to follow my dreams no matter that be pulling on someone's hair inside of a hat. Yeah. And you know what? They got their star back. So I give him a 10 out of 10 too. 10 out of 10, Ratatouille. Love okay. Ratatouille. Okay. Yeah. All right, next Remy. up. We have uh, the great mouse detective. Um, the pose is a serve. Yes, this is Basil of Baker Street. <laughs> I remember, yeah, this one's giving you, like, did someone say mystery? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Waist is cinched. Yeah. It's, the belt of it's, the overcoat. It's, it's definitely, like, yeah, Violet Tchotchke's reveal. Love. From her season of Drag Race. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my that, God. That, like, houndstooth reveal. Yes. I don't know. It's kind of nosy. To- well, you hit that on the nose. Yeah, I did. Um, I did. Kind of nosy. He's like, <laughs> wants to be in everyone's business. Yeah. He's like, no, guys, I'm doing my own research to get to the real story of it all. And everyone's like, just, you're a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> I think also ambitious, but fashion for me, a 10. The Love fashion the is fit. a 10. And the attitude. I mean, it is a serve. Yeah, it's a serve. And, he, and you know what? He has two friends, so he can't be that bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah. I love it. I actually haven't seen this movie in so long. It's a I don't good remember one. it. Yep. It's a really good one. And they're in London if he has a British accent. Ooh, yeah. For sure. So, yeah. Yeah, just very educated, very wise. I think the villain's name was Ratigan. Mm. So we have another rat on the loose. <laughs> what is this rat? Is, is his it name Rizzo? Rizzo from the Muppets. From the Muppets. Mm. Rizzo from the Muppets. I always forgot this was a Muppet. This is something I would kill. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. It looks like it looks like no. This this oof. He looks like he's actively stuck in a sticky trap. Yeah. Yeah. This one's this one is this one has seen hell. It's 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 seen fire. Yeah. It's seen abandonment. Definitely put through the ringer, yeah. I'd Th- say. This is that rat that, like, the mom ate all the babies except for him. Yeah, he <laughs> he escaped that and probably a, a few other scenarios. Yeah. Um, and now he's in Hollywood trying to, like, everyone wants a piece of Rizzo. Yeah. He's having to test his drugs for other drugs to make sure there's no fentanyl in them. Right. Definitely, like, where's the after Always hours? Test. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know... It's his summer, so... <laughs> it is his summer. Yeah. Own it. <laughs> I feel like this is like the Timothy Chalamet of rats. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is like Timothy Chalamet is like in that, you know, not that Timothy Chalamet is like, you know, I think this one's just seen some things. I think Timothy's seen some things too. Uh, you know, by the coat though, I feel like he's just kind of, maybe that's his vibe, kind of like grungy kind of doesn't really pretend to really care what he looks yeah. like, but then has, like, a sick varsity jacket on with, like, yellow satin sleeves. This is the rat who goes to Euphoria High. Love, yes, exactly. This is the but, rat. And everybody dies for him. Yes. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. He, like, he's he sees all of it. He's been up. He knows, like, uh, what everyone's dad's up to. Mm. <laughs> totally. He knows, he be like, nibbling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows where to get the, uh, you know, the the pills. Yeah, the cheese to, to give to Rue. Yeah, yeah. He he's seen some things. Totally, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna give that one like an eight out of ten. I was like, yeah. I just well, because I'm rooting for him. Totally. He also looks like he hasn't slept in like ten years. So we're just gonna. I'll, yeah, I'll I'll also give him it. I'll give him a nine. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Room for improvement. Fair enough. And but what, love you. One of my favorites. Uh, Lester, the possum, 
from a Goofy movie, mm. which is one of my favorite scenes out of any movie um, where Goofy takes his son uh, to this possum park mm. and this country bear jamboree of broken animatronics entertain people. They're short-circuiting. They're falling apart. And it's... I My siblings and I to this day go, who's your favorite possum? <laughs> and they're like, Lester! <laughs> and this little girl looks over at the sun and she smiles and she has like all of her teeth missing and it's really, really funny. So I wanted some like country representation. Like I just said, I got back from Austin and I felt like this was what a, a lot of the Austin men looks like. Mm. Um... You know, just comfortable, jolly, friendly, ulterior motives. <laughs> okay. And um, I just feel like this was just a nice, a nice representation of a of a like a bear rodent. Mm. You know, the Goofy movie holds a special place in my heart. It's yeah, such a good movie, and also one of my first numbers um, uh, in show show choir that I joined um, in middle school, which didn't help with mm -hmm. you know, the bullying. Um, but we did stand out. Stand out. Oh, I know. I I still listen to that in my car. So good. I mean, even if it's gotta, gotta shout out loud, loud if not is the only face you'll see, <laughs> gonna stand <laughs> out till you notice, notice me. me. Yep. Yeah, so good. I love that movie. Oh yeah. That is definitely a song that I will like blast in LA with my windows down and like no qualms. Don't care. Yeah. I yep. think he's gonna maybe an eight because I feel like I would be a little insecure because I'm not sure if he's looking at me or somebody else right. in the club. Yeah. And but he's got a nice smile. And I like the gloves and the bandana and the hat. Yeah, I think it's a tiny little hat. Gorgeous. Tiny hat, neckerchief. Does and... anyone still wear yeah. a hat? Huh? <laughs> I said, does anyone still wear a hat? A tiny hat? Well, could be. I would wear a tiny hat, just a little. A little chapeau, yeah. Yeah, just a tiny hat. Love. Yeah, so this is good. I give this one an 8 out of 10. So those are my, that, that is just my just saying uh, rat men mm. top favorites for this year. Um, okay. Let me know what you guys think, because I want to know, like, what rat guys that rat. we should look out for. Mm. A rat review, if you will. The rat review, Love. yes. Yes, that was our 2024 rat review. Now, going from Disney, we talked about Goofy. Um, this came out over the weekend as well. The first seven Saw films are now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so baffled by this. Yeah. I don't get it. So, Disney now owns Hulu and everything else. Mm. So, I feel like I have a lot of questions. So, the article says Disney Plus is now expanding into the horror territory and is now streaming the first seven Saw films following the release of the franchise's 10th installment last year. Starting on June 13th, Disney Plus subscribers can now stream the first seven films of the Jigsaw-led horror series through the streamer's Hulu bundle. Um, and it goes, you know, Saw, Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 5, Saw 6, and even Saw 3D. What? Hmm. So, <laughs> it's kind of wild because it says, for the time the Saw series became tiresome to the culture after releasing the 10 films over nearly 20 years, it's remained a cult favorite among horror fans. Um... But now it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. So I'm just confused. Are we going to have a warning? Is Jigsaw going to be part of the Oogie Boogie Bash this Halloween? Mm -hmm. Will Saw, will, will there be a little tricycle going down Main Street <laughs> with, I want to play a game, Tinkerbell. Like, what are we going <laughs> to, like, what is it? Are we going to have, like, Wendy thrown into a, a, a tub of needles? Mm. Like, what? Are we going to have the country bare face trap jamboree? That's what I want. It's definitely um, putting the plus in Disney Plus. Um, <laughs> they're definitely expanding from their own catalog. That's, what's, that's what I think. Anything goes in a plus. Yeah. Anything goes in a plus. They said plus. They yeah, said they plus. They can't say. They were like, well, Apple it's plus. plus. Sure. Exactly. LGBTQ plus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, where, it's in the plus. Hey. The proof is in the plus. Ex hey, and they're um, proving that. But now, I someone hit me up and was just like, you know what? There's a Saw ride 
in the UK. Because I'm like, are we going to have like a Disney Plus? Is there going to be Saw Land? We have stars. Yeah. Star Wars. We, we have, Like, are we going to get a Saw Land where you have 30 seconds to escape this <laughs> panic room? Yeah. Um, and, and by that, I mean, it's a small world. Totally. Um, <laughs> So this is the world's first horror movie-themed roller coaster. And I love this setup. I'm just going to read it real quick. Ride through Jigsaw's most intricate torture equipment on this terrifying horror roller coaster. If you can avoid the swinging pendulum blades, the floor of spikes, and the giant rotating blades, you might just make it out alive. Even the bravest thrill seekers will cling on tight as they face a beyond vertical drop of 100 degrees. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> from a height of 100 feet. Plummet toward the ground with almost no view of the track ahead of you. How can you be sure that it's really there? Mm. Book now! <laughs> 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 can we... So this is the Saw Coaster. These people clearly do not want to be there. Look mm. at that drop. That's... No. You're just literally just... Yeah. Going straight down. Um... I kind of love that, though, for a ride. What, the Saw ride? Well, yeah, like, a lot of roller coasters are, like, thrill-seeking. So, yeah. like, even adding that on top. Because, like, I love, I mean, not to the extent, but um, Hollywood. Or what is the the hotel one? Where the drops? Oh, um, that was the Hollywood Tower of Terror. Terror, yeah. Now Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I haven't been back. Yeah. In a while, so. It's been, Yeah. They got rid of it, which I love that one. I do like like a like a, yes, a horror themed. Yeah, I I I love roller coasters. I would definitely ride this roller coaster for sure, mm. <clears throat> as long as it's not the roller coaster from the House on Haunted Hill, or what was it? The haunting? I can't remember. If it was haunting the one with Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh huh. And they went to that like theme park, and like part of it was like, oh, it de looks like it derails. Did uh -huh. you ever see this movie? No. <gasps> so. They would have a coaster go ahead of you. Mm. So you're riding this coaster and you see like the pipe come off the track. Yeah. And the fake coaster flies off the ro uh, off the track uh -huh. and lands like, you know, in a big bunch of pillows. And yeah, they're like, yeah. oh my God, to freak everyone out. And then it comes together when the roller coaster goes. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Absolutely no, 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 not. No. But the new Donkey Kong... Um, Donkey Kart ride that they're making for Mario Land or whatever uh -huh. has that where it's on a thing and it looks like it jumps the track just like the video game. Oh. No thanks. It would be a fun immersive ride or game that like you go in with random people and have to like complete tasks mm -hmm. before. Maybe not, you know, not having to kill other people, but then like making it out alive. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really fun. Like a escape room, but every yes. person for themselves kind of vibe. But see, I love like I feel like this has to be a parody of some sort. We have to, like, have Jigsaw. We need to introduce Jigsaw into the Disney, you know, lexicon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to have, I'm thinking, Pocahontas, um, Stitch, um, um, Piglet, mm -hmm. um, Jiminy Cricket, and um, maybe, like, Merry Weather. And they're all in a room. They yeah. wake up with bear traps on their face. <laughs> An eclectic group. Yes, I love it from all Collective different. Collective group, yeah. all different kind of, you know, walks of life. Yeah. And Jigsaw's like, I want to play a game. <laughs> and they all have to, like, figure it out. Okay, yeah. I'm I, down for I that. would be down for that. Yeah. So, Jigsaw, welcome to the Disney family. Welcome. Now, this woman has no problem with um, holding on to dear life. This is, do you know who Carly Pierce is? I do not. I don't either. Mm. <laughs> Seems she's distancing herself from Satan. She's a country singer. Okay. Um, she looks like Kristen Chenoweth was stuck in the microwave. And uh, her name, uh, she sings, you know, she's letting everyone know that she is now distancing herself from Satan. So she's saying that she's a devout Christian who takes pride, all caps, in using my platform to point people towards Jesus. You know what? I'm totally for that. But uh, she has set the record straight when it comes to her faith because after a picture of her at the 2024 CMA Festival received devil-worshipping accusations. Mm. Yes, devil worship. 
<laughs> the speculation began earlier this week after the Grammy Award winner posted a picture in the Country Festival's parking lot. You've already got me. <laughs> I mean, if this just, if, if we got rid of like, if we got rid of Country Festival's parking lot and changed it to Arby's parking lot, I would have been like, this makes sense. It could have been an Arby's parking lot or an Applebee's. Um, she's showing her rocking a silver embellished mini dress and pointed toe knee-high boots with silver rhinestones to match. Despite the eye-catching, it's the parking space number beneath her which sparked satanic reference speculations. Now, I'm going to guess the number. Is it 666? Six, yes. Six, well, actually, it looks like 66. Oh, there is a faded. It looks like there is a faded stone. Oh, yeah. They'll always reach for something. Yeah. She's in parking spot 66, and they're like, oh, no, there's another six, which is Satan. No, there's I six see a six. Yeah. Do you see a six? Three sixes. Oh. The faded one. Okay, so. It's actually 999. Yeah, it looks 999. It's 999. She's just <laughs> upside down. <laughs> it's all for you, Carly. It's all for you. <laughs> She's not a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a Christian. <laughs> Astrology. Psychics. <laughs> what does she say? Uh, I'm a spiritual warrior. Yeah. I'm a spiritual <laughs> warrior. Um, so while the three-digit number clearly started with 6-6, six, six, the third number wasn't entirely visible. Its partial round shape led fans to believe that the hazy last number was a third. <gasps> six! <laughs> One fan commented on her Instagram post saying, 666, six, six, we know who you worship. <laughs> we know who you worship. People are so fucking bored. Another fan even brought her soul into question. I see you sold your soul to a satanic system. Sad. <laughs> After one too many comments challenged this poor woman, Carly Pierce took to X, previously Twitter. I'm so over previously Twitter. It's so, so tired. <laughs> we know it was previously Twitter. Yeah. Just like, let's move on. To clear up any and all confusion. This is the best ever. I'm going to read this as Carly Pierce. I've seen too many comments about this being some sort of, quote, hint towards 666 or Satan to not comment. First of all, this was the parking spot for my tour bus at CMA Fest. And I believe it is 668. I'm a devout Christian who takes pride, all caps, in using my platform to point people towards Jesus, all caps. <laughs> so for anyone wondering, there are absolutely zero, all caps, underlying messages except a girl excited to be playing the big stage. High five slash prayer emoji. So she is saying she's just distan distancing herself from that. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? And I'm kind of glad that she's just now distancing herself, that she has to explain herself. That, yeah. you know what? Just because I'm standing in a bus parking space doesn't mean I sacrifice goats and worship the Dark Lord. Right. I. But you know what? She looks good. I like the dress. I like the outfit. And... This poor girl's just trying to have a moment. Yeah, she's having a picture. I mean... We know who you serve. I would be surprised if this might have been... I, I feel like her team or somebody must have seen that. And mm -hmm. that could also, like, push the numbers for the post or make it something to talk about, for well, sure. Well, I wanted to come up with some songs because maybe if country music doesn't work out for her, mm. I gave her some... some country jams, uh -huh. you know? She could maybe do like a Katy Perry and make them her own. <laughs> yeah. So she could do um, Satan Take the Wheel. Yeah. That could be a good one. Take it from my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Antichrist Take Me Away. Um, My favorite, I Got Fiends in Low Places. <laughs> We actually need that one. I think that would be good. Yeah. And she'll be and like, And that can no. be played by George Strait to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm glad she's okay. Yeah. We're going to keep things a little country because this woman who didn't know she was pregnant gave birth at a Golden Corral and mm -hmm. names the baby after the restaurant. Um, here's the thing. I don't want to be controversial, but this seems to be... Like a thing. Wasn't there a show called I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant? Mm, yes. How do we not know? Why are people just going to the mall after like a burrito and like being like, oh, there's 10 fingers and toes? Yeah, I wonder like, I feel like 
there's such with pregnancies, like people have really extreme ones and mm-hmm. maybe there is that like lower level that you just really don't know or like a ghost poop. The baby's okay, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, so this this woman, her name is Tavia Woodfork. <laughs> Not Tavia Woodfork. <laughs> Woodfork sounds like like a barbecue place. Like that's that's giving country restaurant right there. Maybe she was born in. We're go- we're going to Wood Fork. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, y'all going to Wood Fork tonight? Come on, going to Wood Fork. Hey, let's bring that Satan worshiping country singer. <laughs> she was standing in a parking spot. She doesn't worship Satan. Um, so she went to Golden Corral, which uh, in North Little Rock, Arkansas. God, this is the best setup ever. <laughs> they never expected the extraordinary turn their day would take. So during the meal, Tavia's mother, Tamika Woodfork. I love Tamika Woodfork. <laughs> Coming to the stage, Tamika Woodfork. Yeah. Uh, shared that her daughter began complaining about stomach pain and excused herself from the table to go to the bathroom. But after 10 anxious minutes, Tavia's mother went to check on her only to find her in distress, crying for more than just cramps. I didn't know what was hap- happening, Tavia told today, sharing that what quickly called for medical assistance. I said, we have to go to the hospital, but she couldn't move her legs. So we ended up calling 911. Um, so they called 911 and... So we, they, they later found out that Tavia was 37 weeks pregnant and in labor, experiencing what's known as a cryptic pregnancy. Mm. So there we go. There we are. Cryptic pregnancy sounds like a band cryptic. I don't want to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it does say where they were unaware that they're pregnant. So they're unaware. I guess they, yeah. she re- she revealed that before that day she hadn't experienced any symptoms, including weight gain or feeling fetal movement. Mm. There were no signs. We had no idea. That's insane. Yeah. Shortly after the paramedics arrived, Tavia gave birth to a healthy baby boy, Tamar Kylon Corral Woodfork. <laughs> I love that. They were still trying to figure out what was going on when she goes, it's out, it's out. The baby was in the toilet. That baby, there's always toilet babies. Oh. Poor things. It's just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So where did your mom have you, Corral? (laughs) Well, in a toilet at a golden corral. No shit. No, no shit. Just me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, they named the baby. Uh, some even suggested she named the baby Golden after Tavia preferred the name Corral. So she names this baby Corral after having the baby in a Golden Corral. Good thing she didn't name the baby Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Um, now they have a place, though, every year for his birthday. They can go to Golden Corral. Oh, I'm sure they have Golden Corral for life. Or she's, every time she goes to the bathroom, someone goes with her now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is what I want. You mm. know how they have like twin conventions like around the country? Mm. We need toilet baby conventions. Mm. I, <laughs> if you or someone you know has a toilet baby, I want these toilet babies to come of age this is a toilet baby brat pack. This mm. is what I want. I want Corral to show up. Applebee's better be there. Yeah. Uh, Fridays, you better be there as well. Heard- Outback, show up. Chili's pretty chill. Chili's is there. really chill. Yeah. You know, Subway, sure. You're welcome. Yeah. You love to eat fresh. <laughs> um, yeah, if there's just toilet babies named after the toilets in the restaurants, Wendy's, that could go either way. Totally. I wonder if there is like a factual thing who's had the most... I feel like if you're going to have a toilet baby, mm. what restaurant would you want to do it in? Well, hopefully they don't all <laughs> fall in the toilet or it's just like in the bathroom baby. Babies love water. This is... It's technically a water birth. Right. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. So... Olive Garden. When you're Olive here, you're Garden. <laughs> because automatically when you're here, you're family. Yeah. So, Yeah. And that, and who doesn't love like a lifetime of endless breadsticks and salad? Well, those breadsticks will sure push something out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is very, very true. Yeah. Well, well, good luck to Corral, good everyone. Luck. Yeah. Um, and Julian, thank you for being here. Did uh, you have fun? I had so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Please come back anytime. Uh, make sure. Uh, where can people follow you? What's, what do you have coming up? Plug yes. away, plug away. Okay, amazing. Plug you, up that toilet baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm starving, so I'm going to have a big lunch. Um, I am on Instagram at Julian Cookies. I am on TikTok at Julian Brzezinski. Mm-hmm. And then also, yes, I mentioned before, I have a podcast with my best friend Nick Lehman called Breathe If You Agree, where you can find on Apple Music, Spotify, and we have full video episodes on YouTube as well. Our YouTube is at Breathe If You Agree. Um, and then our Instagram is Breathe If You Agree, and our TikTok is Breathe If You Agree Pod. So you can listen there. And then, yeah, very exciting things coming up starting season three of Mustache Academy, which is an original um, scripted series that I play all the parts, like everything, but um, totally created by me. So that's coming up this summer. And yeah, just continuing to be super gay, super proud, (laughs) and a full-fledged diva. Work, mama, the last <laughs> diva. Like, share. Yes, Cher. exactly. And guys, uh, make sure to follow Julian. And thank you again to everyone who came to my show at the Vulcan in Austin, Texas, and the Mothership. Thank you for rating and reviewing. Loved all the Just Sayers coming by and saying hello after the show, taking pictures. And uh, yeah, just keep listening and watching and telling everybody about it. We have a blast here, and we're glad that you do too. So we will see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.